Welcome into this week's edition of the AHSAA Weekly. I'm John Holder. This is your inside look at everything going on with the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Coming up tonight, a big announcement from Executive Director of the AHSAA, Steve Savarese, about the future of the Super 7 Football Championships. We'll have that for you. Also coming up tonight, it is state playoff time, and there were a number of big games across the state in the first round last week, including a number of upsets. Eight number four seeds beat number one seeds. Those are region champions. Really, really unprecedented, and we're going to talk about that. We've got a couple of coaches that pulled off those big upsets from last week. Clayton Harris, the head coach of the Park Crossing Thunderbirds in Montgomery. Also, Adam Fawcett, the head coach of the BB Comer Tigers out of Sylacauga. They will join us. It is also the countdown to the Alabama Mississippi All Star Classic. We are going to take you to defending Class 7A state champion Phoenix City, where the Red Devils have three players going to the Alabama Mississippi All Star Classic. We will speak with head coach Jamie Dubos and those three players here on the AHSAA Weekly. We will also take you to Hoover High School, where a couple of Hoover players selected to play in the game receive their all-star jerseys. We'll have that video for you as well. Ken Washington, Assistant Director of Officials for the Alabama High School Athletic Association, joins us from Montgomery. It's basketball season already, and we're going to talk about a couple of points of emphasis as far as officiating in high school basketball in the state of Alabama this year, along with some video clips as well. And we'll have our WOTM Plays of the Week. All of that and more coming up on this week's edition of the AHSAA Weekly. Don't crack under the pressure of foundation issues. The certified specialists at Ox Foundation Solutions can permanently fix foundation problems at the best price guaranteed. And did you know, moisture and unsafe air from your crawl space can infiltrate your home, causing health hazards and high utility bills. Ox Foundation Solutions has the best plan to keep your home safe. If you are experiencing any issues with your sidewalks, basement, crawl space, or foundation, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. WOTM, your new home for high school sports in Alabama. The road to Jordan-Hare continues this Friday on WOTM with live second round AHSAA playoff coverage featuring the Central Clay Volunteers traveling to Walker County to take on the Jasper Vikings. Stay with WOTM each Friday for live games every round of the playoffs and on to Jordan-Hare for exclusive TV coverage of the AHSAA Super 7 only on WOTM. We are back on the AHSAA Weekly. A huge announcement coming from Executive Director Steve Savarese of the Alabama High School Athletic Association about the future of the Super 7 Football State Championships. Our very own Michael Giddens called up with Coach Savarese this week for the big news. Back on AHSAA Weekly, Coach Steve Savarese is with us. And Coach, I heard you have a big announcement. You got something to tell us. Well, Michael, we do. Um, it's our privilege this week that we're going to be releasing the new contract for the Super 7 Football Championships, which, have cur which currently are being held in Auburn and Tuscaloosa on alternating years. Beginning in 2021, we have agreed to a new 12-year contract that will allow us to not only host at Alabama and Auburn, but starting in two 2021, to host the first football state championship in a new football stadium in Birmingham, Alabama that's being built for UAB in the city of Birmingham. So now our contract allows us to play at the three finest stadiums in the state of Alabama and provide our students an experience of a lifetime as well as their communities. We are truly excited to know that our football championships are on sound foundation for many years to come and we are so grateful to Tuscaloosa, Auburn, and Birmingham for providing our schools this outstanding opportunity. Well, congratulations, Coach Savarese. That's very exciting news. Huge news uh, be going to Auburn, Tuscaloosa, and now Birmingham for the Super 7. Uh, just really exciting. And Coach, also exciting. First round of the playoffs were last night, were Friday night. And uh, we had a huge upset. The number one team in 6A, Sarilyn, getting knocked off by 3-7 and seven Park Crossing. Coach, it's time for the playoffs. What do you think about that upset? Well, first of all, records don't matter when the playoffs start. As you saw last night, where four 
uh, excuse me, eight number four seeds beat number one seeds last night. And we had many number threes beat twos. And when the playoffs start, it's, it's like a rejuvenation for our students and our coaches. Records don't matter. All you got to do is get in. And once you get in, anything can happen. And I was blessed to be able to watch part of that game, the Park Crossing Sarah Land game on the National Federation Network, and which was outstanding coverage. And there was no doubt who was the best team last night. It definitely was Park Crossing. Well, Coach, I know you're busy. you got the winning coaches coming up. They're discussing their round two meeting, so I want to thank you for your time and let you go. Well, thank you, and we appreciate all y'all do for us and covering us on the AHSA network. This is just awesome, and we're very grateful, to again, to the cities of Auburn, Tuscaloosa, and Birmingham for hosting our football championships for the next 12 years. We are truly excited. Thank you. Very excited indeed. Coach Steve Savarese with us on AHSA Weekly. We'll be right back. WOTM, your new home for high school sports in Alabama. The road to Jordan-Hare continues this Friday on WOTM with live second round AHSAA playoff coverage featuring the Central Clay Volunteers traveling to Walker County to take on the Jasper Vikings. Stay with WOTM each Friday for live games every round of the playoffs and on to Jordan-Hare for exclusive TV coverage of the AHSAA Super 7 only on WOTM. You suicide. Don't want to talk about it? You should. Hi, I'm Nick Saban, head football coach at the University of Alabama. Four out of five teens who attempt suicide have given a clear warning sign. By knowing the warning signs associated with suicide and knowing how to help, you could save a life. Visit jasonfoundation.com and start learning how you can make a difference. Back on the AHSAA Weekly, the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Classic just about a month away at M.M. Roberts Stadium on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg. And the Alabama team getting ready for that big clash coming up with Mississippi. Three players from the defending Class 7A state champion Central of Phoenix City will be there. Frankie Bell of the Central of Phoenix City radio program uh, interviewed this week not only head coach Jamie Dubose of the Central of Phoenix City Red Devils, but three great players. Here's Javian Cohen selected, also Joshua Jones and Eddie Williams. Here's Frankie Bell with the contingent from Central Phoenix City. Uh, Buck, let's start off with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what position you play, uh, what's your future plans after high school and after we win the state championship at the Central High School. Yes, sir. Well, of course, my name is Joshua Jones. I'm committed to the University of Kentucky to play offensive tackle and well, after we win the state championship, I plan on walking down on my academics and my goal is to make it to Kentucky and hopefully play football and I'll start my career there. Good deal. Eddie, how about you? Uh, as I said, my name is Eddie Williams. Uh, I'm a wide receiver committed to Clemson University and I uh, plan to enroll early in uh, January to start my career at Clemson. Eddie, you got uh, some big shoes to follow. Uh, we've got a pretty pretty famous former teammate of yours up there, don't we? Yes, sir. Uh, Justin Ross. Justin Ross, okay. Uh, how about you, Javion? Uh, my name is Javion Cohen, four-star offensive lineman. And uh, after getting done with football here, just want to continue to go to school and uh, get my grades right. Hopefully enroll in college in the spring. All right, Coach, how about you? Tell us a little something about yourself. I'm old much. Uh, oh, uh, I, I just uh, uh, been coaching for uh, 27 years, and uh, this will be my uh, fourth, third fourth time being in the Alabama Mississippi All-Star Game. I've been a position coach and a coordinator twice and a head coach once and uh, luckily I'm 3-0 in the game so I hope. Uh, uh, let's go here next. Uh, Javion, tell us what's going to mean to you to play in this, represent the state of Alabama in this All-Star Game. Uh, it means a lot to me, you know, it's a prestigious game, probably the highest award a player in the state of Alabama can receive and uh, I just want to go out there and give all my all. Good deal. How about you, Ed? Uh, Really just one of the main goals is go out there and come back, get a dub for Alabama, and just show out there and showcase why I'm a four-star receiver and one receiver in Alabama. Good deal. Okay. Well, how about you? I just like Jay and EJ said, um, it'd be nice to win. So go out there and put everything on the line and get that first dub magic bird for Alabama. 
Coach, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're only allowed to have three participants from each high school or from any high school. Well, yeah, there's three schools in the state that can have three uh, players on it, uh, and we were one of the three uh, that had three selected. And, uh, you know, it speaks volumes for uh, our, our assistant coaches and our program, but uh, we had other players that could have been in, but it's kind of a need thing, you know. Uh, as you can tell, we needed some offensive linemen. So, of course, these two guys got in the game, and then, uh, EJ, uh, Eddie got in it uh, on uh, on the wide receiver deal, but we had several other guys that were on that cutting line that could have got in it. But uh, from a need basis, these guys were probably the most needed to be on the team from all over the state. Thanks to Frankie Bell and the Central Phoenix City Radio crew for that interview from Phoenix City. Now we're going to take you to Hoover to a Hoover pep rally where the Alabama All-Stars from Hoover received their jerseys for the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Classic. This is David Bodden and Robbie Ashford from the Hoover Bucket The Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game is in December. We have two players on our team that will re represent the state of Alabama in the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game. Quarterback Robbie Ashford. This is Elton. There, there we go. There, there's Bobby Ashford. There. And Officer Lyman David Bobby. The game will be played December 14th in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. In Hattiesburg, Mississippi, December 14th. It's a great honor for these young men to represent our school and our state versus Mississippi in the All-Star game. WOTM, your new home for high school sports in Alabama. The road to Jordan-Hare continues this Friday on WOTM with live second round AHSAA playoff coverage featuring the Central Clay Volunteers traveling to Walker County to take on the Jasper Vikings. Stay with WOTM each Friday for live games every round of the playoffs and on to Jordan-Hare for exclusive TV coverage of the AHSAA Super 7 only on WOTM. Both Hoover and Central of Phoenix City won their first round playoff games, advancing to round number two. And now we're going to take a look at the brackets for all seven classifications, 1A through 7A, for the second round of the playoffs. We'll begin in Class 1A, Brantley last week scored 72. Noel de Solga scored seven last week. They'll play each other in the South this week in 1A. That will be something to see there with the 72 points from Brantley, seven from Noel de Solga. Now they meet each other in the Class 1A second round. In Class 2A, some big games in North Alabama. Number two, Ohatchee hosting number three, Collins on the Creek Bank at Ohatchee. Also another top 10 matchup as defending state champion Fife will be hosting the Ranburn Bulldogs. Two huge games taking place in North Alabama in Class 2A. We move to Class 3A where Class 3A Region 6, they swept every game of the first round. B.B. Comer of Sylacauga, Piedmont, Randolph County of Weedowie, and Walter Welburn of Anniston all moving to round number two, all four teams sweeping in Class 3A Region 6. We move to Class 4A, one of the dark horses, the Anniston High School Bulldogs, one on the road at Fayette County. They get Fairview at home this week. That's a team to watch in Class 4A in the second round. In Class 5A, the big game coming up is a rematch of a game that was number one versus number two in the regular season in Class County. This time they'll play at Cairo Gambrel Field up in Jasper, a rematch between Jasper and Central of Clay County. That will be the WOTM game of the week right here this Friday night coming from Jasper, Alabama. Now we move to Class 6A, another region that won every game they swept was Class 6A Region 6, Clay Chalkville, Oxford, Pinson Valley, and Gardendale all winning their first round games to advance to round number two. And finally, in Class 7A, keep in mind now, there are smaller rounds here. They only play four rounds as opposed to five rounds. So this is the quarterfinals for Class 7A. We saw Central Phoenix City and their outstanding trio that's headed to the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Game. They get fair hope this week, and the Hoover Bucks take on Sparkman with their duo also headed to the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Game. And those are your brackets for classes 1A through 7A. Coming up next on the AHSAA Weekly, 
Two of those teams that were number four seeds that beat number one seeds and pulled upsets in the first round will join us. Clayton Harris, head coach of the Park Crossing Thunderbirds out of Montgomery, and Adam Fawcett, head coach of the BB Comer Tigers out of Sylacauga. They join us next on the AHSA Weekly. What's lurking under your home? Moisture and unsafe air from your crawl space can infiltrate your home, causing health hazards and high utility bills. Ox Foundation Solutions will help you with the best plan to keep your home safe. Get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. Did you know that suicide is the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 24? It is also one of the leading causes of preventable death in our nation. It is time we all start to talk more about youth suicide and how we can change these statistics. My name is Nick Saban, head football coach at the University of Alabama, and I'm working with the Jason Foundation and the AFCA to address this serious national health issue. Visit jasonfoundation.com to learn what you can do to help prevent youth suicide. Don't crack under the pressure of foundation issues. The certified specialists at Ox Foundation Solutions can permanently fix foundation problems at the best price, guaranteed. If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. We're now back on AHSA Weekly, and I'm now talking with Coach Clayton Harris of Park Crossing High School. Coach Harris, how are you doing today after last night's game? Well, I'm doing great. Just um, glad to be back. Um, with the win, um, hard fought game, kids played well, coaches coached well, and just glad to be here. To us, it's just another game. You know, we have played against some of the top competition in the state of Alabama from the Central, Phoenix City to Robert E. Lee, um, played Clay Chalkville, um, and St. Paul, and you know, you have played those type teams, and you know, it's just preparation for the playoffs. You know, we started out slow, but one thing I told the guys, you know, as long as we stay in every game, which every game we played this year, um, we were in the game. And, you know, last night we just came out victorious and did what we were supposed to do to be victorious. That's right, Coach. You've had a lot of close losses this year. And we saw you a few weeks ago on our WOTM Thursday night game of the week. You hosted Auburn, and you were in that game for four quarters. But just that schedule in general, tough games, a lot of strong opponents. Can you just talk about how that has prepared you to pull off this upset and, and advance in the playoffs? Well, like I said, you know, we are, we are you know, playoff ready. You know, playing the teams that we have played, played the schedule that we have played, you know, it has prepared us for the playoffs. And, you know, like I told the kids, don't be d discouraged about losing. You know, sometimes you learn a lot by losing. And, you know, those learning moments teach you how to win in close games like last night. Not many expect you to be here, but you'll go to round two and you'll host in the Crampton Bowl, Stan Hope Elmore. I don't know if you had much time to, to look at the film and prepare for them, but uh, what are your thoughts on Stan Hope Elmore and the, the upcoming game Friday night? Well, they, they, they're a well coached, um, great team. Um, they do a lot of good things. They're very physical. Um, we just got to go out and play park crossing football and just do what we do. You know, it's one of those things, like I told the kids, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And the biggest thing right now is just making sure we finish strong and have a great playoff uh, push. Well, Coach, uh, once again, congratulations on the, the huge upset, one of the biggest upsets in Alabama State playoff history. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing your team host Stan Hope Elmore this upcoming Friday. Uh, thanks for your time, Coach. Thanks. Go Thunderbirds. Now we're joined by Coach Adam Fawcett of the B.B. Comer Tigers. Coach Adam Fawcett, you just pulled off a huge upset. You knock off the number one seed, Fulton Dale, and you advance to take on Geraldine. First, can you talk about the, the upset over Fulton Dale? How did that game come about? Uh, man, it was a big night for us. Uh, we came out early and, and didn't play well. You know, we, we were actually down 16-0 at the end of the first quarter. Uh, we didn't have a first down, and, and, we're, and we're down two scores. So. Um, it was uh, the the end the end of the quarter uh, session was uh, all about um, playing hard and, and not giving up and uh, our guys uh, put a, put a score on the board made it sixteen to eight and and uh, kind of kept driving after that so we were down nineteen fourteen at halftime and uh, came out in the second half and, and, and played well in the second half and uh, were able to seal the win. Now you advance to the second round where you'll host Geraldine. Uh, at Legion Stadium in Sylacauga. Coach, has been a long time since B.B. Comer hosted a playoff game. You can talk about the excitement, 
that's building up and, uh, and what's going to happen Friday night when Geraldine comes to town? Yeah, so uh, it's been uh, 18, 19 years. It was 2000, uh, last time uh, Comer hosted a playoff game. So uh, ju just the excitement in the community and the program, you know, it's uh, to, to be where we are and to, to be in the region that we're in. And, uh, you know, our, our region goes 4-0 last night. It says a lot about our region. Um, you know, before the playoffs, our region's top, you know, top three are, are – are tied for first and, and there's a tie for first and there's a tie for fourth in the region. So it says a lot about the region and, and then to go out in the first round and go 4-0 in the first round says a lot about, about our region and, and the toughness of our region. So, uh, you know, but fr Friday night's going to be going to be a big night. Uh, there will be a ton of people uh, involved and, and uh, you know, like I said, the community's there. There's already uh, people on social media and, and uh, everywhere else talking about being at the game and, and having a good crowd. and. Um, you know, our, our fans traveled well last night, so uh, I can't imagine imagine how big the crowd will be for a home game, uh, seeing as we had so many people there last night for, for an away game. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a good time to it, – it's, it, it's a great time for us for, for us in, in the, just the, the turnaround that we've had. You know, this is year two. This is only the second year that, that I've been in the program. And, and the kids, uh, the commitment of the kids and, and the commitment of the community and the school and, and everybody involved is, is amazing. And it's been a <clears throat> it's been been a lot of fun um, just being part of this. It's been a blessing to be a part of it. Well, Coach, congratulations on your upset victory advancing to round two. And you and your BB Comer Tiger will take on Geraldine this upcoming Friday. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Back with more HSA Weekly after this. WOTM, your new home for high school sports in Alabama. The road to Jordan-Hare continues this Friday on WOTM with live second round AHSAA playoff coverage featuring the Central Clay Volunteers traveling to Walker County to take on the Jasper Vikings. Stay with WOTM each Friday for live games every round of the playoffs and on to Jordan-Hare for exclusive TV coverage of the AHSAA Super 7, only on WOTM. Back on the AHSAA Weekly and time to go once again to Montgomery to the offices of the Alabama High School Athletic Association and time to visit once again with Assistant Director of Officials for the AHSAA, Ken Washington. Ken, glad to have you with us on the program again this week. How you doing, John? Everything been good with you? Oh, man, things have been great. We're in the middle of football season. We're starting basketball season, and that's where we want to go tonight, Ken, with basketball games already starting across the state of Alabama. We've got teams already playing basketball games, and so a lot of folks are interested in basketball and some of the things that are happening there. From an official standpoint tonight, we've got some video clips that we're going to kind of demonstrate some things about basketball officiating tonight. One is verticality. Before we look at the clips, tell the basketball fans out there what we're talking about when we talk about verticality. Well, verticality uh, is in response to the defensive player. A lot of times as fans, we like to watch the ball. And so whenever an offensive player is driving into uh, the basket and there's contact, uh, sometimes, a lot of times, created by the offensive player, everybody in the gym thinks it should be a foul. But the definition of a, a, a principal verticality is a, a defender who is facing the opponent, and uh, they have a right to their verticality with their arms straight up, and they're able to jump from A to A. That means jump straight up, straight down, uh, as long as they're not jumping towards the defender or to the side, making contact with the offensive player. But if that defender jumps A to A straight up, straight down, and it, the contact is created by the offensive player, we want to either call a, have a no call on that play or uh, if the contact is egregious enough, we want to put an offensive foul on the offensive player. Okay, so we're going to take a look at clip number one here. Now, I think both of these should have been no calls. One was correct, one was incorrect. So take us through clip number one here and tell us about the first one. Uh, sure will. Uh, the first clip, we got a drive to the basket, uh, and the secondary defender comes up to who's going to defend the basket. That defender jumps up A to A like we talked about earlier, and the offensive player creates all the contact. Uh, the contact kind of turns the defender, 
but the defender was legal. And uh, the uh, contact by the offensive player is what turned the defender, and we have a correct no call on that play. Okay, and the second clip we're going to take a look at uh, is, again, verticality. Similar looking play, but uh, a different result. Tell us what happened here. Well, here is it's definitely a tough position for the crew. Our uh, lead is pretty wide on the play. If he closed in a little bit towards the painted area, uh, our center uh, official may have not had a uh, felt like they needed to guess on this play, but the offensive player used a little chicken wing move on the defender and, uh, and ends up getting a call on the play. And as we can see on the second look on this play, the defender is pretty legal. And uh, the reason it looked a little funny for the, the center official is because the offensive player were using the chicken wing, a little nice move that he got away with this time and ended up getting a three-point play off of it. Ken, great information tonight pertaining to high school basketball. Football's not over with. Next week, we're going to have a preview. We're sending a camera crew to the Central of Clay County and Jasper game, and we're going to take an inside look at what happens with the officials before the game and so forth. So we'll have some interesting things next week from that game. Ken, thank you so much for joining us once again on the AHSAA Weekly. Hey, John, it's always a pleasure. Always the same here. Ken Washington, Assistant Director of Officials for the Alabama High School Athletic Association. More when we turn back. You suicide. Don't want to talk about it? You should. Hi, I'm Nick Saban, head football coach at the University of Alabama. Four out of five teens who attempt suicide have given a clear warning sign. By knowing the warning signs associated with suicide and knowing how to help, you could save a life. Visit jasonfoundation.com and start learning how you can make a difference. WOTM, your new home for high school sports in Alabama. The road to Jordan-Hare continues this Friday on WOTM with live second round AHSAA playoff coverage featuring the Central Clay Volunteers traveling to Walker County to take on the Jasper Vikings. Stay with WOTM each Friday for live games every round of the playoffs and on to Jordan-Hare for exclusive TV coverage of the AHSAA Super 7 only on WOTM. Things feeling a little uneven at home? Ox Foundation Solutions will fix your uneven concrete sidewalk, driveway, or basement in no time. Locally owned and accredited, Ox Foundation Solutions will come up with the right fix for you. Get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. Back on the AHSAA Weekly, we have a couple of WOTM Plays of the Week this week. Our first comes from the big Silicaga Alexandria game at Death Valley. Here's Jimmy Dell Abrams and Butch Barker. Ronnie Royal will take the snap. Royal with a little pitch, and they're going to throw the football. And got a man out here is caught for the first down. A little razzle-dazzle for uh, Alexandria. Boy, nice adjustment by Antonio Ross. Credit McGee with putting some air under the ball. I love the way that Ross fades out to the outside to put that ball back on his number and comes up with the catch. Our second WOTM play of the week comes from a 5A playoff game between Jasper and Madison Academy. Here's Johnny Elmore and Woody Wilson. Oh, oh. All right, third down, back to the ball game. Bad snap. It's over the head of the quarterback. Vikings are after him. Ball still on the ground, and it's picked up, picked up by the Vikings. 40, 50, back the other way, sudden change. 10, 5, touchdown, Jacob Danner. Catlin, Catlin, okay. I thought it was six, but it was eight. That's right. Ken, oh, man. Ken Tavius Catlin with a scoop and score. Scooped the football up at about the 40. And in the pay dirt, he went. He got a convoy. And in the pay dirt, Mr. Catlin went. Wow. Ken Tavius Catlin. I couldn't make that number out. <laughs> eight or six. Yeah. Wrapping up this week's AHSAA Weekly, want to remind you, coming up Friday night live all across the state, right here, we've got that huge 5A second round playoff game between the Jasper Vikings hosting defending state champion Central of Clay County as the Vols travel over to Walker County. Should be a great game. We'll have it for you live right here on WOTM, and we'll see you here next week for the AHSAA Weekly.